All right, what's going on, guys? Uh, just to reveal my new shirt. Oh, it's Berserk! There it is. I posted it yesterday, but uh, I just wanted to show you what it looked like uh, in the flesh. But this video, we're going to be concentrating on the Matrix, uh, primarily the Matrix 4 Resurrections. Now, a trailer released on September 9th, and I just kind of wanted to look over some of the images and kind of give you my overall thoughts of what I think of it so far, and whether or not I'm optimistic or slightly down in the dumps. But uh, let's take a look at some of these images. Now, the first one we see here is like a cityscape, and it's overly colored, overly... CGI'd. Um, now, I believe this is probably done intentionally, trying to make it look like the Matrix has improved, has sort of changed its dynamic, if you will, because back in the early 2000s, everything was so cyberpunk and so dark and gritty, so the Matrix kind of catered to that, but now people are more into expressing themselves, being more colorful, vibrant, so I feel like the Matrix is sort of catering to that, um, to that demand, catering to that sort of shift, to that paradigm shift. And then we see a black cat referencing the first movie. Now, as we get through a lot of these images, you will notice that most of these references are to the first movie. Now, I'm wondering if the Wachowski brothers, or I think it's just Lana Wachowski that's working on this one, I'm wondering if they're taking into account that most people didn't like the second and third film. Second film, you know, a lot of people liked, but some people were kind of like, eh, I kind of got away from the first film. And then the third film, I feel like the majority of the people didn't like that one. So I'm wondering if they're getting back to the roots here. They're like, well, everyone liked the first film. So if we make a bunch of references to the first film, maybe that will stick. Maybe we'll sort of re-energize people and make them like The Matrix again. Um, so we'll see. Um, we see a nice little image here of Neo, and it looks like he's being kept alive by various machines. Now, we know by the end of the third movie, spoiler alert, that he sort of made a truce with the Matrix. He made a truce with the machines, and they sort of took him in. So, it almost looks like they got him in some sort of comatose state in the new version of the matrix uh so very interesting why are they still keeping him alive that's an interesting little conundrum and they're also keeping someone else alive as well so we'll we'll get to that a little later now is this supposed to be john wick meets the matrix because it's really throwing me off i kind of wish that he would have cut his hair or you know worn some sort of a wig that made him look the made him look like the original thomas anderson like this kind of just seems a little off-putting to me like i i kind of feel like i'm watching another john wick movie um i don't know i i just feel like maybe they should have changed that a little bit and now you got neil patrick harris as the psychiatrist now the first thing i thought of was doogie hauser like <laughs> he's not like a medical doctor but he's still a doctor so i don't know now everyone's kind of making memes out of this image right here of keanu reeves um with a rubber duck on his head and um now there's actually some symbolism here um in computer code there is such a thing known as um rubber duct debugging um where you put a rubber duck on top of your computer and when you're doing code you talk yourself through the process as if you're having a conversation with the rubber duck because it's very tedious and monotonous and you want to get everything right um, I'm not a coder, so I have I, I know nothing of this, but it's actually kind of interesting that they took a real-life coding thing and they put it in the movie. So, you know, it's not supposed to be comedic, although it is. Everyone's going to meme this thing to death, but it's actually got some symbolism there. Um, and then we got a shot of uh, Trinity. And now we see various shots of Neo taking the blue pill. Um, so it looks like the Matrix has sort of given him some sort of affliction probably depression or anxiety or something like that and someone inside the matrix is giving him this anti-anxiety or anti-depression medication and it's it's the blue pill it makes him keep believing that he's living a normal life that he's not living in a computer simulation um but as we find out a little later 
you know, he takes the red pill. And um, I, I kind of like the shot here with the Alice in Wonderland book because it's a callback to the first movie. And it's kind of what I alluded to in the beginning of my little soliloquy um, was that they're bringing back all these references from the original Matrix. Now, the Matrix borrows a lot of themes and symbolism from Alice in Wonderland. And you sort of see that later on in this little clip here. I'll uh, point that out. Now, this is interesting because you see Thomas Anderson here, and it almost looks like a film of the original Matrix in the background. Now, how does the original Matrix film exist within this world? Or, you know, is this supposed to be like a meta reference to the fact that, like, stuff that we created in previous lives, previous world... They exist within the new worlds, but we don't recognize it. Like, there's there's always been this, like, theory out there, like, that we live in, like, a parallel universe. Like, some people believe that Nelson Mandela died in the past. Some people think that he's still alive. And then there's, like, other, like, references out there where, like, people misremember things. And are like, oh, my God, it's the Matrix. And some of us remember and some of us don't. So I don't know if it's a play on that or... Well, you know, I'm sure the movie will explain it in some fashion. And then uh, Neo looks like he's taking the red pill here from the new Morpheus. Um, and he is the new Morpheus um, on IMBD. It does say that he is Morpheus. Now, this actor doesn't have a lot of acclaim to his name. I'm sorry to say it, but he just doesn't. I was looking at his IMBD profile and like he's been in Baywatch and uh, Aquaman. And I'm like, uh you know, if it was Lawrence Fishburne, you know, I know he's an actual serious actor. I mean, he did a phenomenal job with the original series, but this guy just kind of seems Hollywood-esque. He kind of seems a little cliched to me. And he even says when he hands Neo the red pill, let's fly. I'm like, come on. Like, are we just going nonstop cliches and typical Hollywood action film stuff? Uh, man, it just doesn't work for me. Now, an interesting little scene here. It's another reference to Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass where Neo walks through the mirror through the looking glass, if you will. So that's a nice little callback back and then you got a scene in which Thomas Anderson i.e. Neo is fighting the new Morpheus and they're bringing it back to the dojo again so I don't know if Lana Wachowski is just thinking like if I just give you guys a movie in which I recall everything from the first film are you guys going to like it? Like, are you going to like the fact that it's going to have a new CGI look? It's going to be cleaner, crisper, and I'm going to throw some references in there. Like, I, I, I don't know, but it just kind of gives me the vibe that it's a money grab and it's not going to do anything new or innovative. So I, I don't know. I mean, I was reading an interview that they showed the film to Keanu Reeves and he was impressed by it. Like, he actually really liked it. So... I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I'll hold judgment until I actually see it for myself. But um, I don't. I, I'm just not getting inspired. I, I'm not. I, I'm not feeling that same Matrix vibe. It, it it just feels off to me. And then you got a scene here where it looks like one of the agents has got a gun to Thomas Anderson. It, it's a callback to the situation in which Mr. Smith was interrogating Morpheus in the original movie. And he had all the water coming down on Morpheus and he escaped. And then, um, you know, it, you got... You got Thomas Anderson escaping as well. Now, in the background of this image, it goes by really fast, but I got a still shot. It looks like um, Deus Ex Machina. Now, Deus Ex Machina is a plot device in which a character pulls out some special power to escape an impossible situation. Which you could argue is Neo's character in a lot of ways. However, Deus Ex Machina in the Matrix universe is actually the name of like the central AI, the central computer system that Neo talked to at the end of the Matrix 3. So a lot of symbolism there, a lot of uh, hidden messages. 
A nice little image of Trinity being kept alive by the Matrix, so very cool. And again, it kind of makes you wonder as to why they're keeping Trinity alive. Why is she... Why is she important? Why is Thomas Anderson important? What purpose do they serve to the Matrix? Um, you know, we'll have to figure that out. And then, you know, another reference to the first movie as well. You got uh, Neo and Trinity on top of the building uh, with the helicopters. And in this scene, you see Neo control the missile for the helicopter into another helicopter. Um, so, you know, you had in the first movie where he was able to stop the bullets. Well, in this one, he's able to control a missile. So it looks like he's retained some of his powers and um, he can still manipulate the Matrix in very profound ways. And at the end of this too, him and Trinity are jumping off of a building. Now, in the original Matrix, he had to believe. Now, I believe at this point in the movie, he's probably going to look over at Trinity and say, you have to believe Trinity and they're going to jump off together. Um, so it just kind of makes me believe that this movie's not going to be that great, to be honest with you. And then you have this mysterious guy at the end here and he mentions the Matrix. Um, so it could be a callback to the architect, the new architect of the Matrix, um, or could be the same architect just, you know, posing in a different body. So yeah, that's the trailer guys. And um, cautiously optimistic, to be honest with you. I want to like it. I really do. I loved, I love the first Matrix. Second one, you know, it was good. It, 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 I'll say it was good. And then the third one, kind of a kind of a bummer, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's been, what, 18 years since a Matrix movie has come out. So I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>